Greetings, Starfighters. Welcome to the Season 1 wrap-up episode of Shameless Cash Grab, wherein I will be ranking the 11 movies in the Strange Things set, with 1 being the best and 11 being My Mom's a Werewolf. As you can tell from the fact that I'm standing someplace completely different, this is not going to be a traditional episode of this show because... I'm not going to be going in very depth on these movies, just saying something really quick, and then at the end of this episode I will announce the set that I have chosen for the next season of Shameless Cash Grab. Number 11, My Mom's a Werewolf. Piss. Number 10, Warriors of the Wasteland. This movie would probably rank slightly higher if it weren't for the incredibly awkward and out-of-nowhere sexual assault sequence. Maybe not much higher, but up until that moment, it is a stupid but watchable Mad Max ripoff. But then, you know, that scene happens. Still, if you like Italian knockoffs, you'd probably like Warriors of the Wasteland, but um, yeah, I can't rank it any higher than 10. Number 9. Eternal Evil. Not much to say about Eternal Evil that I didn't actually say in the episode itself. It, it's a movie that is almost an hour and a half long and yet still feels incredibly rushed. Things happen so fast it is, like I said in that review, like the movie is summarizing itself. And that makes it tough to really connect with any of the characters or to sympathize with the situation that's going on. Number 8. Alien Contamination I think I was a little harsher on Alien Contamination in the review than it really deserved. Not that the negative things I said about it are necessarily untrue, just that despite those things, it's still enjoyable in its own cheesy little way, as the Italian knockoffs movie... <laughs> the Italian knockoff movies, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that one in, as those kind of movies really are. So, I mean, more so than Warriors of the Wasteland, if you like Italian knockoffs, I think you'd love it, a Alien Contamination. Although, I suggest, if you can find a copy, get, get like, the remastered version that's simply called Contamination. The title sequence is readable, and you can get a better look at the monster at the end of the movie. And also, the soundtrack's a little better, too. Number seven. Lurkers. Lurkers almost works. It almost works. What ultimately kills it are two things. The bad soundtrack and the complete lack of any likability in any of the protagonists. The basic plot of it is fine. But, eh. Number six, Mutant. In some ways, Mutant is actually worse than Lurkers, but I rated it higher than Lurkers for two main reasons. One, Mutant has a few more likable characters in it than Lurkers does, by which I mean it has any likable characters in it. And in the final act, you get a fairly rare display in these kinds of movies of competence from city and state officials. In most movies like this, if city and state officials even exist, they're at, at best well-meaning but dumb, and at worst are complicit in the events. Number five, Krull. Krull does have a great soundtrack. It really does. You can't take that away from it. And the glaive, the rare occasions where we actually get to see the damn thing, looks pretty cool. Other than that, though, it, it kind of feels like you're playing... Actually, no, not like you're playing, like you're watching a D&D &D campaign on rails. At least that's what it feels like to me. I, I know that this movie is probably the most beloved amongst nerds of any of the 11 movies in this set, but honestly, I never quite cared for it. Certainly not as much as as any of my parents did, but, eh, that's how these things go. Number four, Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. 
Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone is a lie. <laughs> it sells itself as a Star Wars ripoff, but it's really only true for about the first 10, 15 minutes max, probably not even that much, before it turns into a Mad Max ripoff. Not unlike Warriors of the Wasteland. Um, I want to say better Mad Max ripoff, but that's, that's debatable. But Space Hunter, it is bad in some of the fun ways, and Ernie Hudson is awesome in it. Grand Ernie Hudson is usually awesome in everything he's in, even if what he's in is an unsalvageable piece of shit. <laughs> Torchwood Miracle Day. But anyway, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I have so much phlegm. Okay. Number three, Pulse. Unlike a couple of the other movies in the set, I've actually lessened my opinion of Pulse since I uh, first reviewed it. Initially, when I was first putting this list together, it was going to be in the number two spot, but I realized that while it's filmed well, it's atmospheric, the main child character is actually fairly decent as child characters go, as I have often said. I tend to be a little easier on child actors because for perfectly good reasons, they can be hit or miss. But unfortunately, that it still suffers a little bit from having the adult characters have to be a little on the stupid side in order for some of the uh, scary events in the film to happen. Now, I didn't pick up on this right away because, like I said, the cinematography is really good, the, the, the music does a good job of setting the mood, but I, while I do still put it in the top half, I like it a little less than I did when I reviewed it way back in episode one. Number two, The Hearse. The Hearse is objectively worse than some of the movies that rank below it on this list. However, it is so back crap crazy, especially in the second half, that it is totally worth watching. I would love it if The Hearse gets to be one of the movies featured in season 12 of MST3K. That would just be... That, that would just be... Mm, that would be perfect. Number one, Slipstream. Slipstream is just a good movie. It's not perfect, but, you know, many of the complaints I had about it I put in the review. Some of the sweeping panor panoramic shots, beautiful as they are, go a little long. Um, some of the minor characters could have actually stood to be fleshed out a little more. But overall... It is just a damn good movie with a solid cast. Um, Mark Hamill's great as he usually is. Ben Kingsley manages to make an impression despite his very brief screen time. Late great Bill Paxton was on point. You know, I mean, there was some problematic moments in it. Sure, I mean there there was one scene in particular I talked about in the review that made me outright cringe. But you know, even with that, it is just. I imagine that a lot of the people who bought this set, or at least I'd like to think, that they would agree with me that Slipstream is absolutely, hands down, the best movie in the Strange Things set. These, of course, are all my rankings, and it is admittedly arbitrary to a certain extent, although... I'm sorry, the, 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 uh, once I saw My Mom's a Werewolf, I just knew that it was next to impossible for any movie but that one to take the bottom spot. And so, that was the Strange Things set. So, like I said at the beginning, at the end of this video, I am going to announce what the next season is going to be. Now, if you follow me on social media at all, uh, at Arkle on Twitter, the Human Arkle on Tumblr, at, etc., you'll know that I'd had it narrowed down to two sets. A cash-in set for The Breakfast Club and a cash-in set for Baywatch. Presumably for the movie, but probably for the TV show as well, since it's had, I mean, since it, there wouldn't have been a movie if there wasn't at least some resurgent interest in the TV series. Probably because there's a lot of 90s nostalgia going on right now. But I have wondered, what would be the best way to announce 
which one I chose for season two of Shameless Cash Grab. Usually in these movies, the, you know, city and state officials are... <laughs> and scene. You know, it's amusing. Look what's been behind you all this, all this time. <laughs>